Now, for most of us, we're facing one of the most challenging times of our lives at the moment. And here at Loose Women, we think it's very important to open up and talk about it. And we asked you, have you felt more anxious recently as a parent? And 57% of you have said yes. Now, it's been nearly seven weeks. Uh, Kay, what do you feel about parenting in lockdown? I mean, how, how are things at home with the girls? Um, well, I, I mean, I would say this has really tested me, uh, Christine, and, and it continues to test me. Um, I really don't like it. I speak to some friends who say, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually loving it. I'm settling down. I don't. I really don't like it. But I don't like it most for my children um, because... And I think other people have said this, you know, I've got one 17 year old who's hopefully going off to university and this was supposed to be an amazing summer for her. She had such a lot to look forward to. And that's just been kind of taken away. Um, and, you know, my little one's supposed to be in school. She's very gregarious and she, she loves, you know, she loves being with her friends. I'm not so worried about her education, to be honest. I think she'll catch up, but I'm worried about her social, you know, social life. But... All these things are running around my head and I think I have to be careful not to make them anxious because I am anxious. And I think I am doing that. Uh, and actually, my little one last night was really, really upset because she tried to dye her hair pink and it didn't work. <laughs> but I mean, apart from that, she was fine. And I said to her, how are you getting on with the homeschooling, Bonnie? What do you think? Can I help you? She went, no, I'm fine. I'm all right. I said, are you sure I can't help you? And she said, no, no, she says, you're not bright enough. You know, so she's kind of <laughs> probably correct. So I think now at this stage, I really have to have a word with myself and say, OK, you're anxious. You're sort of looking forward into the future, but don't project that onto them mm. because it's not going to help. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's where I am with it. It's, it is difficult and everyone's individual, you know, their home life and lifestyle is different. I, I, I actually really do t speak to my children about it. I try not to watch too much of the news and so on, but I have really sat them down and let them understand, like, the importance of a routine and, you know, us always lying in and eating differently, how much it will affect our mental health. And um, I speak to my kids about quite a lot, especially my little boy as well, because he's a young boy. And I think for men, you know, we know there's a high percentage of men that unfortunately commit suicide yearly and things like that. And I think that young boys, when they're young, they're not really spoken to about being comfortable and feeling okay to express their emotion, their feelings, whether they feel vulnerable, whether they feel fearful. So I really try to allow my son to have that space and speak to him about it. So for me, I am anxious, but I have an open discussion with my children. I was going to say, because you're like that anyway, aren't you? Regardless of what's yeah. going on now, I would say that's your, your parent. You've always been that sort of open, talkative parent. I don't know if the lockdown has, has made me more anxious as a parent. It's just that my anxieties are different. Because mm. I think that when you've got kids, you're always worried yeah. mm. about... Are they making friends? Are they not making friends? Are they being good? Are they working their hardest? Am I, am I doing enough as a parent? Mm. You're constantly questioning yourself. And I think that, if I'm honest, lockdown is like, some days are great. Some days I'm like, wow, my child is Einstein and he's going yeah. places. Other days I'm like, uh-oh, yeah. we're going to need yeah. to yeah. do something about this. <laughs> it's just no, there's no, like, happy medium, but mm. I don't think there is in life in general. Anyway, yeah. I think I'll, I'm always conscious of their environment, I'm always conscious of everything that they're soaking in and, t and taking in every day, but I don't think that that's changed from mm. lockdown. No, no, very true. Well, I remember um, when we were doing our NHS Loose Women just a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about how people weren't taking uh, their children to hospital, yeah. the A&Es were sitting empty because people were fearful. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking it on that day, going, oh gosh, I know that would be awful. Well, typically, just last week, we ended up in that exact situation. Wow. And our little one, it, like many Pistol Echo with lots of parents, I'm sure, basically woke up with a really high temperature. And then, of course, your mind goes to very dark places as to yeah. what this could be. But to cut a rather long story short, we were, we were told by our GP to go straight to A&E. And it was the words I did not want to hear that mm. day. I just assumed she'd maybe be given an antibiotic or whatever and she'd yeah. be fine. But being told you have to go to hospital by a doctor is always really troublesome. Yes, it's scary. worrying, isn't it? But we went anyway. And typically, um, only one parent can go in now because of the whole virus really? setup. So mm. Frank went home. I went in 
with her and suddenly you felt really alone. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, this is dreadful. But of course the doctors and nurses, as we all know at the NHS and the Chelsea Westminster Hospital it was, were fantastic. Um, and, and look, she had a rash and all of the bits that are very scary. It all turned out to be fine and she's great. And, and as I say, I've yeah. cut a very long story short, but the outcome of what I'm trying to say is people are feeling anxious about that right now. You hear yeah. it in the news, don't take your children to hospital yeah. in case. Please just do it. I walked in, there was just one other family sitting mm. in the a &E waiting room. Mm. Don't try and, and sort of decide what the issue is yourself. Um, yeah, you're I, if you're worried at all, I, all I can say to you is I have done it now and I'm so mm. glad that I did. And, and please just, the NHS are still there for everybody yeah. else. It's yeah. not just about Corona right now. So I think it's really important that you say that, Christina. Gosh, I'm really sorry that you had that. That must have been awful. Yeah. But... Yeah. They're so keen to get that message out, aren't they now, that, you know, don't decide, make sure that you do make contact with the NHS. And if you have to go to hospital, they have made provisions. I think they've got red zones and green zones or hot zones and cold zones. So, um, you know, you should feel confident to go and, and get checked out. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't reiterate that enough. Oh, thankfully she is, exactly. But like I said, just don't take any risks, honestly. Yeah. Just get out there and look after yourselves as best you can. Because as we say, there's enough anxiety, isn't there, right now? Yeah. I'm telling you. So I know, <laughs> let's just do the right thing. Um, so look, if you are feeling anxious and you're struggling at home and anything that we've talked about there resonates with you, please take a look at our website. You're going to find some helplines and organisations um, that um, are quite willing and open to talk with you about anything. So please don't feel like you're alone. There's always someone out there that can help.